tingling and paralysis are symptoms that we have when our nerves are injured. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today on this video. I will be sharing with you what's causing the numbness and the paralysis. And I'm also going to share with you how the wellness champions, how they are resolving the numbness, the numbness is going away, and they are regaining their mobility by treating the cause, by treating infections. If we haven't met, my name is Pam Bartha, and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis over 30 years ago. And it's really sad that when I was diagnosed, they did not know what caused multiple sclerosis, and today they still don't know what causes MS, and today they still don't have a cure. And things haven't changed a whole lot. We have a lot more different types of disease modifying drugs. So our standard of care focuses on suppressing parts of our immune system. They feel that our immune system has gone haywire and we have to suppress it. So they want our standard of care, really the treatment for MS is taking maintenance pharmaceuticals for the rest of our life. They don't promise that they will stop the disease, that they will slow it down. They hope it'll slow it down, but it doesn't because when we suppress our soldiers, our immune system, then we become, I believe, we become sicker with different types of infections and we still become disabled and we have a hor horrible quality of life. So let's first talk about inflammation and infection and then we're going to go into what's causing the MS, the paralysis and the numbness. So number one, Inflammation is always present when we have an infection. So inflammation, or sorry, let me backtrack. Inflammation is always present when we're suffering with chronic disease, always. We know that inflammation is our immune system's response to some kind of enemy. It could be a toxin or it could be an infection. So obviously if we were, if we took some toxin into our body, we definitely could be dealing with inflammation, but more often than not, we haven't been exposed to, exposed to some major toxin. And really what we're dealing with is we're dealing with infection. So inflammation is the body's response to the immune system's response to infection. So we know that inflammation is present in all chronic disease, multiple sclerosis included, and our soldiers, our white blood cells, our, all of our immune cells, they are the good guys. They are protecting us from the infections. The disease-causing microbes, the different types of parasites, I call them, and it's not just worms. It could be bacteria, it could be single cell parasites, it could be worms, fungi, any microorganism that's living inside of us and causing us harm is a parasite. So they are the bad guys. And the inflammation, just think about it as the war zone. It is the reaction of our immune system fighting these infections. So that being said, it really helps us to understand like why inflammation is present. And I'm gonna go and just share a little bit more background so that we can kind of pull it all together. So there are many different types of parasites that can infect us and they can infect our, in, our intestines and in time they move into our blood, they move into our organs and they move into our central nervous system. Science knows that the central nervous system, our brain and our, our spinal cord, they are not sterile environments. That's really important to know. We thought years and years ago that, that there were no bad microbes that could get into our central nervous system, but that is not the case. So remember that this inflammation is, inflammation is present in multiple sclerosis, and it's not just present in MS, but it is the cause of the symptoms that we're dealing with. So when we have these infections, it's not really like the infection that's causing us to become paralyzed and causing us to have all these other horrible symptoms, including numbness but it's our immune system's response to those infections. There are many different types of parasites that can infect us. And I've shared lots of research. If this is the first time you've met me, make sure to go to our Live Disease Free YouTube channel. I have a playlist on different types of infections that cause MS. So I've shared research from Dr. Alan McDonald, 
who found filaria worms in the spinal fluid of every MS patient. Those are little round worms. In the spinal fluid of every single MS patient he tested, I've shared about immature tapeworms, some of his research, but also other case studies of larva, the immature forms of the tapeworm getting into the central nervous system. We've also looked at studies of fungus where it's, it's much higher in people that have MS and all chronic diseases, but they're finding the fungi in the central nervous system. Also the brillia. So this is just touching, scratching the surface. There are so many other microbes that can enter into the central nervous system and cause problems. But Borrelia, which is the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, is also another parasite that is found in the central nervous system in MS. It actually is carried in by those little roundworms. So we know that there are roundworms, there are developing tapeworms, that even the juvenile, Dr. Al McDonald found not just the immature form, but the juvenile developing tapeworm, and then the fungi and Borrelia. So there are so many, and then there's also schistosomiasis, which is another condition. It's a flat worm. They're flat worms, and it's an infection that can actually get into the central nervous system. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a study in a minute. But there are so many different types of microbes, disease-causing microbes, that can get into the central nervous system, cause our immune system to fight. Inflammation is produced. And I've shared lots of different videos on that also. And with that, there is a war zone and our nerves are damaged. And whatever nerves become damaged, that relates back to some type of a symptom. So if we have nerve damage higher up in our brain or higher in the spinal cord, we will have certain types of symptoms, neurological symptoms. If it's lower in our spinal cord, we'll have different types. So Sometimes it can affect our upper limbs, sometimes our lower limbs. It really depends on which nerves become injured and inflamed from the, our immune system dealing with these infections. Another important thing to know that I've shared in previous videos, again, you can look at YouTube Live Disease Free, is that when parasites are present in the central nervous system, they form lesions. And again, that's the immune system's response trying to deal with the parasite in the central nervous system. And in order to get an MS diagnosis, they have to find lesions in the central nervous system. So this is well understood in science. And I've shared research in previous videos. Make sure to go and watch those. So I just hope to simplify this whole thing for you. And I don't think I have you guys up. Yes, I do. I can see you guys there. Awesome. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the question box. I, I will share. I'm just going to share a little study here and then I'm done. So the study is called spinal cord schistosomiasis. It took me a while to get that word down straight. So schistosomiasis is a type or schistosome, they're a type of flatworm. And they are deaf there, they'll get into different parts of the body. They'll definitely infect the intestines and we can have constipation or bloody. It's more like diarrhea and bloody, but you can have constipation also. They definitely can get into the bladder area and we have a lot of urinary problems and that's really common with MS. But they can also make their way, the eggs can make their way into the central nervous system and then we have all kinds of neurological problems. So this study, again, called spinal cord schistosomiasis. And I just wanted to share a little bit with you what they shared just in the abstract. So acute my, uh, myelo myelopathy. So that means that it's, it is damaging to the, to the nerves in the, in the spinal, spinal cord, but also the central nervous system, so the brain and the spinal cord. So, which causes urinary retention, weakness and paralysis is, and th these symptoms, it's increasingly being recognized as a common neurological complication of schistosomiasis. So they're saying that <clears throat> this nerve, nerve damage, which is causing the urinary problems and weakness and paralysis, that is, increasingly being recognized as symptoms of this flatworm infection in the central nervous system. So their eggs, 
reach the spinal cord. <clears throat> and that leads to inflammation. So this is the immune system's reaction to it. And a lot of like tissue, our tissue and cells will form around these eggs and will have probably like a little type of cyst, which will probably show up as a, as a lesion. But patients with spinal schistosomiasis may not show any evidence of schistosomiasis. So they may not have the normal, like if a doctor sees them and they have certain pain, they may not show that. It's really hard to test for these flatworms also, but it is detected. So the way that they can tell if we have, you know, these wayward eggs from the flatworm that have made their way into the central nervous system, the way we could tell is through a spinal cord biopsy, which is really invasive or an autopsy if we've died, that would be easier if we passed away already. So it's really difficult to, to test for these parasites in the central nervous system. We don't test for parasites in the central nervous system. All we do is we look for lesions through MRIs. We also might look to see what kind of antibodies are present, elevated through the lumbar puncture. We're looking for certain proteins, but we're not looking for different types of parasites. So this is just one example of a flatworm, the egg. So if we have, let's say, a chronic infection of this flatworm in our intestines, in our bladder, it moves into different parts of the body, and then the eggs make their way into the central nervous system, then our immune system is going to fight them in the central nervous system, and we will have inflammation, we will have nerve injury, and we can have symptoms of the, the paralysis and weakness in our mobility. So they, doctors will try to do things like, like to try to figure out if people have this in their, this flatworm, the eggs in their central nervous system, they'll look at stool tests. And again, stool tests don't always show positive. Sometimes they have to do a biopsy, uh, urine, urine examinations. Also, they're looking for schistosome eggs. They're not looking for this a lot in the developed countries either, because they really don't believe that parasites are present in developed countries. And so they will also look at spinal, they won't, I, it's unheard of that I know of. If you let me know if you've heard of anyone who's had their spinal fluid tested for parasites. So as I mentioned, it depends where the parasites land in our central nervous system, which nerves become inflamed, injured from this inflammation from our immune system fighting is kind of a war going on. So it's not our immune system attacking itself. It's really our immune system is fighting and sometimes the infections are too populated and our immune system is struggling. And so we have more collateral damage in like, just like in a bad war. How do I know this? Because when our wellness champions treat these parasites effectively, their numbness resolves, their, they get strength back, their spasticity goes away. They get mobility back. I can never promise full mobility, but some people do. Some people get partial. I really believe we have a long way to go in improving again, more and more effectively, quickly treating these infections. But what we're doing right now, it's quite shocking to see how much recovery people are having, even when they have been in a wheelchair or a scooter or a walker, for example, for a long time. So that's really exciting. And I believe that if, if the injury to the nerve is still in the inflammation stage, that can be reversed and that can be healed. If it's permanent damage to the nerve, to the myelin sheath, we don't know how to fix that yet. But the exciting thing is that there is so much inflammation that still can be reversed that we just did not know. We thought that it was permanent damage. So that's super exciting. So this is just one example of how a, sing, a little tiny egg from a flatworm can get into the central nervous system, can cause inflammation, can cause damage to the nerves wherever it's landing, and can cause paralysis, weakness first and paralysis. And what we see with MS is it progresses. It's usually like tingling and then weakness and then paralysis. So let me know if you have been dealing with paralysis, if you have been dealing with numbness or tingling, for myself, my very first symptom was that tingling where you bend your neck and you get that sharp tingle down your back. 
and into my arms. And that was when I was pregnant uh, with my second child. And that was my very first symptom. And the doctor just kind of like, oh, whatever. And he just, you know, ignored it because I didn't have any other symptoms. But then later, six months after my son was born, that's when I had a really severe case of optic neuritis, lost all vision in my left eye. So I'm gonna to go to your comments and see what you have to share here. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Morris. Hi, Valerie. Let me know if you have any questions. Hi, Herman. Herman. Nice to meet you, Lori. Hi, Tom. So videos you've taken of from your good friend's blood. Awesome. Uh, 35 year old just diagnosed with MS. I'm really, really sorry. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Is it Juju? I'm really sorry. 35 years old is really young. I was 28 when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So just diagnosed with MS, this is the perfect time for you to find me. So you have a decision to make. You can either go down the path of standard of care. And if you go down that path, they, what they're going to do is they're going to look for lesions to they already did because you were diagnosed with MS. So they're going to, they will prescribe disease modifying drugs and all the MS drugs, they suppress different parts of our immune system, as I mentioned before, either our B cells or our T cells. Sometimes they prevent our lymphocytes from coming out of the lymph nodes where they are produced. Sometimes they prevent our T and B cells or either of them to go into the central nervous system. Remember I said it's not a sterile environment and we need our immune system there to defend us from infection. If we suppress our immune system and we have all these infections, then the infections can take over more quickly. And other microbes will become a problem for us. Like we're, we're, we're suppressing our defense. And so when we take in other microbes through breathing, through what we eat, etc., what we're exposed to, then we have other infections and they all like to live in specific parts of the body. So we end up with different types of diseases, not just MS, if we're on these immunosuppressive drugs. We can have cancer. What I see in my students a lot is MS and cancer, MS and diabetes, MS and inflammatory bowel, arthritis. I've even seen epilepsy and in time, we can have three to five diseases on multiple medications. It's a horrible way to live and we'll be on one MS drug until a certain white blood cell becomes dangerously low, then they'll switch us to another drug and then we might be at risk of a rare brain infection, then they'll switch us to another one. Meanwhile, we become more and more disabled because we haven't treated the cause. If we treat the infections, especially early on like I did, it's a lot easier to treat. It still takes work, but it's a lot quicker and a lot easier. So people that are just newly diagnosed, some of my students that are real keeners that have followed step-by-step step the Emilia Disease Free Academy, they have become symptom-free in three months to four months, for sure under six months. I would say more like three to four months. But does that mean they're totally like cured of these infections? No they still are treating over several cycles because these are very small microbes. They're biofilm, they're hiding behind biofilms. They produce many eggs and the treatments we use, they have limited benefit of crossing the blood brain barrier, et cetera. So that's why we have to do multiple treatment cycles, but that is how we treat the cause and we get our life back. And that's the very unique thing that I do in the Live Disease Free System, in the Live Disease Free Academy, is that we're not focused on diet. Diet is the first step, absolutely. We have to eat in a way that we decrease the, the food to the infections that are making us sick. They all thrive on carbohydrates. You will notice a huge improvement when you decrease the food to them. Then the next step is to support the body. And then we look at building a game plan to treat. And how the students treat is they're using a combination of parasite drugs, herbs, and oxidizing agents all together and introducing things one at a time. And when you do all of that with a successful prep phase where you've had a lot of success, then you notice like really significant improvements really quickly, like within months. So I really hope that I hope, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly, but I really hope that you consider taking a different path because you are so young 
you have your life ahead of you and there is hope for you but if you don't treat the infections they will get worse and you will become disabled that's just part of multiple sclerosis i'm very happy to give you hope so hermine you must be from a different country i recognize the name now because i i have some european family does heavy metal toxins cause infection inflammation um no so heavy metals are definitely some of them can be neurotoxins and we definitely have to detox heavy metals we do know that when we have parasites that they do according to different research that they become heavy metal sink so they absorb a lot of the heavy metals that are inside of us not all of them but they have a higher concentration of the heavy metals in them than we do in ourselves and, but they're still inside of us so we definitely do in the recovery we do treat or we do heavy metal detox but we don't do it initially we first support the body we're feeling a lot better a lot stronger then we start treating we're feeling a lot better right we're having a lot more symptom improvement and then we do the heavy metal detox. That's the order that we do it. So, so yes, any toxin could cause inflammation, but for most of us, that's not what's causing BMS symptoms. I would say, unless you're like in a radioactive area or you've just ingested a whole bunch of poison, for the vast majority of us, we're exposed to chronic or like low level amounts of different types of metals in our environment. And it can definitely, affect our immune system, but the biggest factor that's affected our immune system to get us to this point is the overuse of antibiotics and then some medications. Like for women, for example, like myself, I was on antibiotics for acne when I was 16 and that definitely disrupts, it devastates our good healthy microbes. And then for some women, they're taking different types of hormones and that will also definitely benefit the infections. And there are other, so the steroids, for example, the immunosuppressive will definitely make the infections more populated, stronger, etc. So those would th be things that would cause more of benefit to those infections. Hello, Alexander. Hi, Michael. You deal with vertigo balance issues when you lift and bend. Um, your pulse rate increases, uh, tachycardia. So some of these different microbes, they will infect the heart area. We know that Lyme, for example, it's just one. There's others too. So Lyme, the Borrelia will definitely affect the heart. So you're getting all these different symptoms that are caused by, again, it's not one type of infection, unfortunately. I wish it was, it'd be so easy. I could just write a book and we cure the whole world, but it isn't. So we see that the sicker we are, the more out of balance we are. We have several different types of disease causing microbes that are making us sick. And so we're definitely knocking back very often worms and single cell bacteria or protists, I should say, single cell parasites and bacteria and fungi. And so that is what we're doing to recover. So different types of infections located in different types of the body, parts of the body will cause different symptoms. So you, it's kind of like you've got a lot going on in different areas of your body. So hopefully you will work on that. Hi, Teresa. So did I regain the vision in my eye? No, I didn't. When I was 28 years old, that was when I had the significant optic neuritis in this eye. And it was literally like that for six weeks. I had no coach. I didn't know about infections. I was put on prednisone. And for like six weeks, it was like that. And then I started to get some vision back. So prednisone is not going to give you, or any kind of steroid is not gonna give you more healing than you would normally have. It just helps to accelerate the healing because it suppresses your immune system. So there, it's like shutting down the war, right? So the war goes, gets shut down and then the collateral damage is shut down, but the infections are still there. So I got enough vision back in my left eye that I could see in a, you know, like it looks like I'm in a dark room. So I could not drive with my left eye. You can't tell because it's the optic nerve behind, but it is definitely affected uh, like 3D. Um, but luckily nobody can tell. And I've adapted to it for now. I just had my birthday last week and I'm over 60 or 60, just a couple of days over 60. And so 
unfortunately, like I, I was so ignorant. I had no idea. I was like a walking time bomb, you know, coming down with MS. I thought it was a healthy person. I would definitely had insomnia and I was just go, 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 had two small kids, wasn't sleeping. And then my immune system just said enough is enough. And I had a severe case of optic neuritis, not just a little one. Some people get a little bit of optic neuritis and it goes away and they get their vision back. And I got very minimal vision back. So I can't, if I didn't have my right eye, I wouldn't be able to drive with my left eye. So that's why I want to make sure everyone doesn't have to go through that, what I did. Hi, monkey. How do you tell where parasites are exactly located in, in the body? So if, if you have, let's say, joint pain, then you will definitely have some in your joints. If you have gut issues, you have constipation, you have diarrhea, you're really out of balance there. If you have, let's say, you've had liver enzyme, like liver testing done and your liver enzymes are elevated, then you definitely have parasites there. So it's kind of whenever you, if you have, let's say, low blood iron, then you could have them in your gut, etc. So you, we don't really focus at this point where exactly they're located because that's another really good point that you made there is that like sometimes if our students are focusing on the gut a lot, then some, a lot of their neurological symptoms will go away. So we know that there's this highway of nerves from the lining of your intestines all the way into your brain and spinal cord. And so sometimes the nerves in your intestines become inflamed because of the war, right? Remember, your immune system are the soldiers, the different types of parasites are the enemy, and inflammation is the war. It's the smoke, it's the damage, it's the destruction. And so it's not our immune system just going after our own tissue, it's our immune system trying to get to treat these infections and there's damage occurring. So the nerves that in our intestines, they can become inflamed also. And as we treat the parasites in the intestines, then we can have a lot of relief with different types of symptoms, neurological symptoms and strength and spasticity. So it's not just in the central nervous system, very important to know that. It is also what's located in the gut, very important point. All right, so how do you know how do I know what I, how do you know what you know? <laughs> That's a good question, Barry. So again, 30 years of, you know, of, of, I was 30 years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis over 30 years ago now. And I, it's just my personality. I guess it's my God given talent and or gift to be really persistent and to be really like, a, I am an, a, an incredible investigator. So I just love to figure out why, 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 why. And for me first, it was for myself. I didn't want to live with chronic disease. I didn't want to be in a wheelchair. I didn't want, and I didn't know that I could stop it. Nobody had done it that I knew of. All I learned about were these infections. And so as I treated them really well, I was able to just get my health back. And then when you get your life back, and that's just me, is that that's all you want to do is help others because it's so scary when you get that diagnosis. I remember that I was just devastated. I was just deflated. I just thought my life was over. And when you can help other people get their health and their life back, it's just so incredibly rewarding. It's hard. And so I do a lot of praying. So you're wondering how I, I know what I know. I do ask God for a lot of help and he has really answered a lot of my prayers. It's by the grace of God that I'm alive and over 60 and I, you know, I can take care of play with my grandkids and feed the chickens and the dogs and travel and do whatever I want to do. And to have this amazing opportunity to try to bring the truth out. It is so hard. There is so much resistance to bringing this truth out because there's no money in treating parasites. They're like some of these newer drugs, it's over a hundred thousand dollars per year. And all these industries would come crashing down if we treated parasites. We would catch disease early when people are just diagnosed. We'd be able to end their misery. We would save them from a lot of pain and agony. And we're not doing that because, and I'm not blaming the doctors. They're just trained in a certain way. This is what they know. They don't know any different. They believe that parasites are a thing of underdeveloped countries. So that is, that's where we're at right now. And that's why I know what I know is through 
thousands of hours of research. Absolutely. And I have a science degree and I pulled all nighters for many years getting through that. Hi, Gail. What do you think about, I can't talk about that, about shots and MS, but what you can do is you can, you can email us at info at live disease free, info at live disease free.com. I can't talk about that because I will be pulled off of all the platforms. Um, the censorship is out of control. There are some really, really big concerns. I'm following this very carefully and closely. So if you're in contact with me and you're on my list, you will definitely get all of the information. And I don't tell people what to do. All I do is I give you the information from very well reputable doctors, immunologists, epidemiologists, virologists, you make your own decision, right? And, and looking at, you know, the adverse effects and what's happening, how many deaths there are, you know, what, like the test, how, how much uh, research is behind it. Is it really meant? Is it accurate? That's what I give it. And that is my job is I'm an educator. I was trained as a teacher. And so my job is to take the information of how to recover, take the information on how to live on this planet in this crazy time we're living and simplify it for you as much as possible so that you can make the right decision for your health. So email info at live disease free and dot com and then we will send you the email with a whole bunch of references and you can research it yourself. And I am so sorry that you got optic neuritis after the herpes B vaccine. Uh, and yes, it's the problem is that when we are immune compromised, so we have MS or some other types of conditions, and then we add on another assault to our immune system, very often our immune system doesn't handle it well. That's even for safer ones. And so there's a lot of question as to the safety of this. So Michael, you have multiple, you've had multiple sclerosis since 2003. I'm so sorry to hear that. Your white blood count is 13, so I'm not sure if that's that sounds kind of low. I don't know what the range is because there's different countries that have different ranges. So traditionally, if people's white blood count is below normal, below the normal range, you'll see that there is a high and low. And if your number is below that, then that means or it suggests that you have had chronic infection for a long time. So you've also had that crystal, that uh, tingle down your neck problem. You have numbness, paralysis, chronic urinary tract. I am so sorry, problems with your feet. So please look into this, watch my videos, start to change your diet. That's something that you can do right away. I've got a playlist on livediseasefree.com. If you change your diet, you'll start to notice even just your urinary, your bladder urgency. You'll see huge improvements in that in as little as a week if you get the carbs low enough. I've had people just watching my videos on YouTube and just sharing with me with tears that it's helped them so much with their symptoms. So, and the Live Disease Free Diet, all it's about is when you decrease the food to those infections and they love carbs, so you decrease that, they're less active, the inflammation goes down, the war is not taking place so strongly and you have significant symptom improvements. You still wanna treat those infections but it's the first step in recovery and it's something that you can start right away. So Melissa, how do you get into the academy? So with our students, the way like, first of all, they watch a video like this or find me somehow through Facebook, YouTube. And then they like, if you're at the place where you're like, I need a plan, I want to join the academy, then there will be a link for my masterclass training in the feed of this video. You can click on it after we're done, watch it. And then if you want to join the Academy, then you can fill out a form and then we can send you a link to my calendar and you can have a chat with me. Uh, and, but we also send out a detailed explanation of the Academy. So before you and I chat, you'll know exactly all the steps we take, what's all involved, what kind of time commitment, it's very part-time, the cost and all of that. Some people just join from that. But if you want to talk to me, then there you can just book a time in my calendar. You'll get a time to chat with me to get all your questions answered. We just had two new students joining today. Really excited for them. And 
So that's what you do is you, that's the process. Cause I want you to know what your, what journey you're going down. I want you to understand the process. And then you just have to be at a place where you're ready to commit, where you're like, I don't care. I don't need alcohol. I don't need sugar. I don't need caffeine. I want my life back. I want to be able to live my life. I want to do all the fun things that I haven't been doing for a while. Or like if you're just newly diagnosed, it's like, I don't want to go down that path. I don't want to be paralyzed. I don't want to deal with the numbness and paralysis and all of that and have to suffer and then trying to reverse it. I want to nip it in the bud as soon as possible and just get on with my life. And I suggest that's the best thing to do. And that is how I have lived over 30 years free of MS. So there will be a, a link uh, as soon as I'm done. We'll post the link in the feed of this video and at the top of the video. And you can watch it there. Okay, a couple more questions here. So sweet pea, my entire body is numb from nerve damage. It is even in my ears. I have to wear cotton in my ears because of the amplified hearing uh, rare nerve damage I am so sorry I my heart goes out to you terribly sweet pea I would just challenge you that you know sometimes the medical community is not right so sometimes like with MS they'll say there's nothing you can do you're you you're going to just become that's what they told me you're going to be completely disabled and for people that end up in wheelchairs it's like you're never going to come out right you give up the walk or you go into wheelchair that's it you'll never come out but our students are. So what you should do is if you want to see if it's possible to have some recovery, I don't know if you if it's from MS or if it's from something else you haven't said, but what I would do is just start with the steps we take and see how much recovery you will have. I'll bet that you will have some recovery and probably a lot more recovery than you thought possible. And it's so worth it. We've had lots of students like the numbness is not a big deal. We've had a lot of students that the numbness is one of the first symptoms to go. We, it is work. We definitely have to treat the infections, but things like, you know, like drop foot and using walkers and wheelchairs, that would take a little bit more time for students to have to recover from that because they also have to build back their muscle mass too. So it's not just getting rid of the inflammation and allowing the body to heal but it's also building back muscle that has been lost when we don't use use our muscles. So Mike, all you do is look for, again, as soon as I'm done, I'll send, we'll put the link in for you too so you can watch it. Just watch my masterclass. You'll learn about the academy. And then just if you want to join the academy, then fill out the form and we'll send you an email with the Coachathon. Watch it because it explains everything. It'll probably answer most of your questions. Then you can just join or you can talk to me to get last questions answered. So you, Mike, you've been dealing with MS since 2019. So you're still catching it pretty early, which is really awesome. Um, well, that's when it got bad, 2006. That's when you were diagnosed. So maybe I'm guessing that in 2006 you were diagnosed, but it's gotten a lot worse in 2019. There's still lots of hope for you. So if you were, because some people have a few years where they don't have a lot of disability from the MS and then it starts to hit. So that's the infections. There's something usually, and I, I help you to figure out what it is. There's something in your life, it was higher stress, that something caused your immune system to be a little weaker and it just couldn't juggle or hold on, or, you know, deal with the infections like it was before 2019. Sweet pea, you have relapsing remitting MS. Sorry to hear that. So for most people, it starts off with relapsing remitting and then it turns into progressive for, the, for over 80%. So it's all infection. It's that in the early stages, our immune system is strong enough to still give us a little bit of, like it can knock it back well enough where we have a little break. But in time, our body becomes weaker and weaker as these infections become more populated. And then we don't get the breaks anymore. We have a continual decline in our neurological function. And that is when we're in a, t a progressive multiple sclerosis. You're very welcome, Dan. Thank you. It's my pleasure to, to serve you guys. Um, I wouldn't recommend the shot for anyone. Um, again, visit Live Disease, uh, info at livediseasefree.com, info at livediseasefree.com. I'm very concerned about the safety 
I have I believe that within time, like the the truth about all the adverse effects and the deaths and how like it's affecting our blood, how it's affecting our immune response, even with other variants that are coming out. I can't talk about it because it, it's a very heavily censored, but just in, info at livedeasefree.com, info at livedeasefree.com. And we'll give you all of that from doctors, not from me, okay? Because I'm not an expert in all of that. And Sandy, I can't extend my right leg. Is that typical? Yes, I mean, everybody has different types of neurological symptoms and like we don't really focus on that. What we focus on is like, let's support your body, stop feeding the infection, support your body, look at your symptoms, treat the infections, see how much recovery you can have, right? Because some people have drop foot and some people don't. Some people have terrible spasticity, some have numbness, some don't. It's, it varies. So that's the thing with MS. Again, it's we don't all have exactly the same parasites in exactly the same locations, even when we have multiple sclerosis. Some of our students test better for other parasite drugs. So there's a little bit of variety. And that is why in the academy, you're building an individual plan for yourself. As far as diet, if we eat food that we are sensitive to, such as mixing, eating mixed green salad, um, what would be the symptoms? If you're sensitive to green salad, well, usually it would be somebody who has inflammatory bowel that couldn't handle the the salads. So with those students, like most of my, my students have constipation, really bad constipation from the parasites, but a few of them have diarrhea and that's inflammatory bowel. So that's the war is, is really heavily in the gut. And so with those students, then we would avoid raw vegetables until the inflammation has gone down low enough and then they can start to introduce it in again. So we would definitely avoid all the raw vegetables. So it's fine to steam, saute, stir fry, oven roast your vegetables, but they have to be low carb vegetables, right? And I have a list of that on the Live Disease Free Community in, you, in Facebook, Live Disease Free Community. You'll see there, there is a file section or download section and you can join that and you can print that off. And there are some videos in uh, YouTube, Live Disease Free YouTube channel. And if you want to hear when I'm going live with these different trainings, then just make sure to subscribe. Please help to share this video. If you feel it's helpful, if you think other people would benefit from learning about these infections and understanding that their paralysis and their numbness are caused by something that is not a mystery, it is infection. And just remember that vegetables and diet will not, you won't recover from that, it will help you. It'll slow down the infections. They're not gonna be as active, but the only way to recover is to treat the infections, to treat the parasites. Hello, beautiful name, Marshall, I can't even say it. Uh -huh. Marcelorine, Marcelorine, beautiful name. So you, have you read the studies regarding upper cervical adjustments and their positive impact on MS. So you can definitely, like I think chiropractors are wonderful and I, but I only see a chiropractor if I put my back out and honestly it's been at least a couple of years. So like if maybe once every two or three years if I'm doing some exceptional heavy lifting, moving things, then I'll see a chiropractor and they're incredibly helpful. But the MS is caused by infection. So being in alignment is good. It's very good. But going to a chiropractor once or twice a week is in my, unless you have a really significant condition, for vast majority of people, it's just a waste of money, in my humble opinion. Okay, last question, and I, I'll let you guys go. So Crystal, you have a 13-year-old, a 9-year-old, and last four years, you've been, it's been horrible. There's been a huge decline in function, chronic urinary tract infections. Um, you're walking, you're taking the walking drug, I, maybe it's Empira. And for the past four months into last month, I'm talking about possible link. So that walking drug, yes, I shared that the walking drug is definitely linked with significant difficulties with bladder function for sure. 
awesome you emailed me so that's cool all right okay so i'm gonna let you guys go i'll be back next week with another topic about these infections that is my whole goal is to really create awareness in in what is causing ms we have to get this to change we have to get more and more doctors on board and practitioners i want to work myself out a job out of a job eventually that's what i hope but it, I, like I said, if this is the first time that you've met me and you think, wow, this sounds really interesting, but I'm kind of skeptical, then watch my videos on YouTube, Live Disease Free, and subscribe to the channel, learn, and start to implement the diet. When you start to implement the diet, you'll start to see significant symptom improvements. And when you get to the place where you're like, I know I have parasites, I know I have these infections, I want to treat them, I don't know where to find somebody to treat them. I don't know how to treat them. If you need support, watch my masterclass training. And it is how myself, how I have recovered from MS and the wellness champions. And then at the end of it, you can fill out a form. You can, you'll get all the information. You can join, you can become a wellness champion just like our two brand new students did today. All right, so with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Keep up the amazing work, and I really hope that I have given you hope. I hope that you take this different path because it will change your life. Take care and bye-bye for now.